Hello, I'm Han Xu, an undergraduate from Peking University. I'm going to talk about analytical differential calculus with integration. This is a joint work with my advisor, Zheng Jianghu. What is differential calculus? We can first take a look at the previous works. There are two main branches of these works. One is the differential lambda calculus, which is first introduced at 2003. In that paper, differentiation is presented as analyzing occurrence of terms, and it later magnifies many deep connections with the category and automatic differentiation. The other branch of work is a theory of change, which was presented at PLDI 2014. In that paper, it gave rules to propagate change in arbitrary lambda terms, and you can calculate change through these rules. Although these works have many profound findings and application in the programming language, there are still some problems with them. Let's first take a look at uh, the differential lambda calculus. For example, if we want to calculate the derivative of the partial of x multiplied by x at point one, we would write the term as partial x multiplied by x, partial x at point one. And uh, in the differential lambda calculus, uh, it find there are two alternatives to substitute for x. So you get the result as one multiplied by x plus x multiplied by one. And the plus here means the alternative, means there are two choice for you to substitute mm -hmm. x. So far so good, it is very familiar with it is very a similar to our common differentiation. But if we change the things a little bit, it would get differently. If we change the multiply to an arbitrary binary operator, such as O plus, we will get the result as one O plus X plus X O plus one. Here O plus means an update. So the term means it is a two X. But uh, in the common differentiation, we would expect the result as one plus one as two, but here we get the result as two plus two X. Here, I want to point out the problem is that there are still some gaps between analyze on occurrence and the analyze on the computational result. So there is still something we need to do to fill in this gap and make differential calculus more sense. As for a zero change, the problem with it is it has no concept of differentiation or limit. The my idea of the paper is to get the derivative f of a function f so that you can easily compute changes when you change the argument of function f by a little bit. But these are only changes, it is not differentials. Besides, both of the works has no concept of integrations. So to fix this problem, we introduced the calculus with integration. This calculus has many basic programming language features such as some types, tuples, and fixed points. And uh, some features supporting the differentiation such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, derivatives, and integration. Besides, we push forward the concept of differentiation to data structure tuples which means we can not only make uh, differentiations and integrations on some base types such as real or complex numbers, but also on tuples or tuples of tuples. We gave reduction rules to calculate this differentiation. In addition, although we introduced the new differentiation and integration, our calculus still enjoys many good mathematical properties. Uh, there are three properties I want to introduce. The first is the Newton Lab needs formula. This formula lays the foundation for mathematical analyze, which means you can get the original function by integrating the derivative of itself. It guarantees the correct semantics of our integration. The second property is the chain rule, which means the differentiation of a compound functions equals to the multiplication of their respective differentiation. It is also a base, uh, basis for uh, automatic differentiation. 
It has many profound applications in the field of mathematics and programming language. And the last property is the Taylor theorem, which may be the most famous one. The Taylor theorem means you can approximate the function by calculating the derivatives at one point and sum up them together. And uh, this is uh, what we have done. Uh, next, uh, we will first uh, introduce our calculus. Then we will focus uh, mm -hmm. on the three main theorems here. And let's see an overview of our calculus and uh, get some insight into how we make this. The language uh, basic features such as some types uh, tuples and the fixed points are nothing different from the normal lambda calculus. And here I want you to, to focus is the derivative and uh, the integration. The derivative notation here means partial t, partial x at point t. And the, the integration notation here means the lower, you integrate from the lower bound t to the upper bound t. And besides, we introduce three new operations, addition, subtraction, and uh, multiplication to support uh, differentiation and uh, integration and uh, to improve expressibility. With uh, all these operations, we can easily write the express the three main theorems uh, in our calculus. Next, we will first give some details about the derivative and integration, and then we move to addition, subtraction, and multiplication. Uh, the first is uh, reduction rules for derivatives. There are four reduction rules for derivatives. The first three are to calculate derivatives at the point of base type. Here, base type means the types that support some basic properties about differentiation and integration. You can take real numbers or complex numbers as examples. You can also define some base types by yourself. And the three reduction rule here means you just propagate the derivatives into these data structures or functions. And the, the last rule is the main novelty here. Um, we define our reduction rules for calculating derivatives at points of tuples. And you will get derivatives at tuples as tuples of partial derivatives. Uh, this is similar to the derivative for, of high dimensional functions. And with these reduction rules for derivative, we can construct our integer and uh, makes uh, Newton lab needs formula work. The first three, three reduction rules are similar to the case of derivative. You just uh, propagate this integration into the body of data structures and the functions. And uh, so when you calculate the Newton lab needs formula, or, and the, the integration operator will chase after the derivative operator into the body of these terms and, uh, one, and they will end on the base type terms. And so that the newton leibniz formula will hold in our calculus. And the last one is uh, shows how to calculate uh, integration from tuples to tuples. Here we calculate uh, integration from here to here. And uh, the first term means uh, the changes you make uh, by changing the first element t11 to t21. And uh, the second is uh, uh, means calculating the changes from changing the t12 to t22. And the last one is uh, changing the t1n to t2n. And uh, after you get all these changes, you just sum up them together and you will get the result of this integration. And the next uh, is we will introduce addition and the subtraction. The re reduction rule for addition and subtraction are rather simple. Uh, they just uh, propagate the operator into the body of data structures and functions. A thing I want to note here is that uh, when this operator were propagate, they will finally end it on some base type terms and they when they ended on base type terms, they just become normal addition and subtraction on base type. So the addition and the subtraction 
the pair can be viewed as an extension of addition and subtraction on base type. And the last reduction rule is multiplication. The first three rules are very similar to that of the derivatives and integrations. They just propagate the multiplication into the body of terms. And the last one is a bit different. And the last one here is uh, to correspond to the last rule, reduction rules of derivatives and integration. Here we can perform a, a multiplication between tuples. And uh, these rules can be intuitively understood as um, a multiplication between matrix or inner products of vectors. So here is all of our reduction rules. And uh, 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 we've omitted the typing rules here. Uh, and uh, you can find those uh, typing rules in our paper. With all the typing rules and the reduction rules, uh, we can prove the following property. Uh, these properties are progress, preservation, confluence, and uh, strong, normal strong normalization uh, when fixed pointed are excluded. All these properties are very, very practical for our programming. And uh, this is the end of part of introduction to our calculus. Next, we will focus on the three main theorems. This is the Newton Leibniz formula. Uh, we only have some small conditions for this formula to hold. And the first is on the free occurrence of X. And the second is to ensure the equality here is well defined. And so you can see we can um, calculate the integration of derivative of a term T by calculating the changes between two substitution um, of Y by the upper bound T2 and the, the lower bound T1 inside the T. Here is the sketch of the proof. We prove this theorem by inductions on types when t, t1, t2 are of base type. We just assume these theorems hold on them. And based on this, we can um, um, build our whole proof. And uh, co combining the first uh, three reduction rules of derivatives and integration, where the integration operator will chase after the derivative operator into data structures, we can easily get the proof for uh, one T1 and T2 are base type, the Newton Leibniz formula hold. And the use the, using the fourth reduction rules of derivative and integration, uh, which calculating the sum of integration of uh, partial derivatives on T and uh, add a simple lemma here, we can get the proof of Newton Leibniz formula. Mm. This is an application of Newton Leibniz formula. We apply Newton Leibniz formula to incremental computation. In incremental computation, we want to know how much the result will change if we change the argument of function by a little bit. And here we want to calculate the change function here. And by Newton Leibniz formula, it is easy for us to know the change function can be right as uh, integration of its derivative. And uh, this term can be, this formula can be applied on a more concrete example. Here, the mm -hmm. function average is to calculate uh, the average number in a tuple. Oh, and we want to know if we update the first element of the tuple by D, how much the result would change. And applying in the Newton Leibniz formula and after several reduction rules, it is easy for us to know the result is half of D. The second theorem is the chain rule. Uh, this is a little bit different from the chain rule we used to know because we add uh, a multiply t 
by uh, on the right both on the right hand side on both sides of the term. Uh, this is because that the type of derivative of the compound function would mismatch the type of multiplication of derivatives, but uh, uh, adding a multiplication of t can solve this problem. The t here is only to make sure that the uh, type of both sides match, so the t can be arbitrary term as long as it makes the uh, uh, chain rule well tight. And uh, the proof of the chain rule is also based on induction on types and has a similar structure with the previous proof. So we just omit here and we go to the application. Here is an application of the chain rule to automatic differentiation. The example here we want to calculate is the derivative of a compound function max square. Max square is a function that calculates the sum of squares inside a tuple. When the chain rule is applied, um, uh, we know this function is uh, a compound function of uh, a square function and the two projection function pi one and pi two. Uh, using an arbitrary term t, uh, we can easily apply the chain rule into it and get a result like this. Since t can be arbitrary term, so we just uh, use the, uh, a tuple of 0, 1 and a tuple of 1, 0 to substitute it for t, and we will easily get the results of uh, this derivative. The last theorem is the Taylor theorem, uh, which means you can um, get uh, the f T, if applied on t by summing up all the k order derivatives multiplied by k square of t minus t zero. And uh, this proof, the proof of this theorem is uh, also similar to the previous one. So we just omitted it here. And here is an example of how to apply Taylor's theorem to polynomial approximation. Here is an example of a function polar to Cartesian, which will convert the polar coordinate of a point to its uh, Cartesian coordinate. And the things we want to know here is if we change the polar coordinate of a point by a bit, how much its Cartesian coordinate will change. And uh, here we increment and its radius by delta r and change its angle by delta theta. And we will calculate the change up to two other derivative. By applying the Taylor theorem, it is easy to or us to know the first order change is delta r, delta theta. And the second order change is like this. So summing up these changes together, we can get uh, the approximation of uh, the result. And uh, this is the same result with the Taylor's, original Taylor's theorems in high dimensional cases. And uh, to get uh, more sense of this result, you can use the Taylor's expansion on sine theta and uh, cosine theta, and then multiply them by one plus delta r. So here are the conclusion. In our paper, we promote a differential calculus with integration. It has many good properties in both programming and mathematics. We first have many practical programming features such as some types, tuples, and fixed point, and enjoy good programming properties such as soundness, confluence, and strong normalization. Also, Oh, our calculus has many bad, beautiful math properties, such as the newton lebanese formula, the chain rule, and the Taylor's theorem. And uh, so we promote a calculus that bridges the differentiation between programming language and the mathematics together. And that is what we do, in, what we have done in our paper.
but uh, there are some still there are still some works need us to do. Um, and it can now only perform differentiation on tuples or tuples of tuples. So one of our future goal is to perform some differentiation over integers, algebraic types, and function points. Also, we wonder to know how to solve for our solve differential equations in our calculators. And these are the two main goals in our future. And that is all of our presentation. Thanks for listening.